I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Agent Games series. Today I'm here with Ava at the Peoria Zoo. Hello. Hi. So we are surrounded by tubs here, and this a dinosaur, it looks like. So what are these? Well, these are really a rare species in Illinois. This is an alligator snapping turtle. We also have common snapping turtles in the state, and a lot of people will mistakenly say they've got an alligator snapping turtle, but it's actually a common uh, snapping turtle. They believe these went extinct in the state in uh, about 1980 uh, for hunting for their eggs and also for meat. Uh, so the Department of Natural Resources wanted to do a reintroduction program, and we kind of heard about it before they started it, and we said, wow, we would be interested in that. So we got, oh, I think 100 little bitty turtles. We kept them here, and we really fed them to get a lot of weight on them. And then they tried their, uh, reintroducing some, and it didn't go too well because they were about snack size for a raccoon. So they decided to get them larger. So we have had about 200 here over the years. Uh, and when they're the bright size, they take them out uh, into southern Illinois into secret locations. I don't even know what those locations are, and they uh, reintroduce them. They have transmitted most of the turtles that came from us, and they have found that they are doing quite well down there. They're staying where they're supposed to. Their weight gain wasn't exactly what uh, they were hoping for. Uh, they reintroduced in other states, and they had better weight gain. So they think maybe there's not enough food out there in some of these habitats, so they're looking at that right now. But uh, it's a great program that we are in. Uh, we do have one of these turtles on exhibit so people can see it. Uh, but most of this is done behind the scenes, like a lot of zoos. We do work with a lot of other zoos. Uh, some of these turtles came from the St. Louis Zoo, uh, Racine Zoo up in Wisconsin. Uh, so it's really a group effort. And uh, it's one we're really proud of. Our staff gets to go down and help uh, take the turtles out. Uh, it's usually a hot, humid day, but they love doing it and get all dirty and everything. Just uh, putting these out in the wild, which is really what we're here about, is saving these species. So how does whole breed program get started? It was a DNR. We do not breed them here. We just get uh, little ones or different sizes. Uh, we had people call uh, who had them as pets for many, many years and had heard about the program and then they want to give it to us. We do not own these turtles. They're all uh, owned by the Department of Natural Resources. So we work cooperatively with them. Where they want them to go, we do that. We also keep a lot of uh, records on these guys, how uh, long they are, how much weight they put on, especially the little ones, how much uh, weight you can get on head started. I think we put about uh, four or five years of growth on them in one year because uh, we could feed them and they didn't have to go through the winter here. So that's really important in the reintroduction program. You don't want to wait around until uh, they get a lot of size. So it was nice that we could uh, kind of bump that up for them. And obviously this guy here is pretty big. So what is the plan for this guy? I'm not sure what Department of Natural Resources. I think he might go into the breeding program uh, for producing more eggs. Um, so uh, again, it, it depends on every year. They look at how the program's doing, what their need is for the next couple of years. So this is a bit big to be released and definitely a big pain in the butt. Because I'm pretty sure we all know that alligators have to of this Sanitators in general can reach their head pretty far back. And with anyone of this size and weight, because I imagine it's pretty heavy. He, you know, I, I'm thinking he's probably over 100. I, I myself do not work with these guys. I, I don't feel confident in my grip. We do have a herpetologist here who's been doing this for over 30 years, and he has all the confidence in the world. He knows how to handle them without getting hurt or without hurting the turtle as well. So a guy this big, you know, he might be a good uh, trophy. So that might be one reason they don't want to put him out there because somebody just might think it's a, a great thing to catch him. It's something we don't want to have. When you first brought us in here, I saw this guy. I was awestruck for like five minutes. Like, Whoa, because you see that like, Google images of a turtle this size. But seeing it in person is completely different. It's just huge. Yeah, you know, the size of that head is it, just massive. Uh, you know, especially when they start out, uh, you know, about that big as once we got uh, first off. We do have some like, younger ones in we, here. If I, 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, we have a, a mix right now uh, of different sizes in here. So, um, yeah, but this guy, it, it's pretty darn impressive. And, you know, even more so if he opens his mouth, but we're, we're not going to make him do that. <laughs> that might end up with one of us losing our hand. That, I, I'd like to keep my hand. Yeah, that'd be a good thing. <laughs> so, about how many turtles do you release every year? It's been about 100 every year for the past three years. Uh, so, Right now, like I said, they, they um, radio track some of them to see how the survivability is. They do some capture and recapture methods down there. Um, so they're getting a lot of information to see if um, there's more habitat that they can get or if we come to uh, maybe the highest number that we can support uh, down in that area and either uh, recruit another area or um, hopefully we'll get some breeding out of the ones they have. So hasn't been any like, recorded breeding done yet, or is it still waiting for that? None yet, but yeah, that would be that would be really exciting that uh, once they've gotten out there, they're able to breed these out there. And how long has this program been going on? Uh, well, we started talking to them in about 2006, and I think our first turtles got here uh, in 2008. So about 10 years we've been uh, housing turtles here. And then you said about 100 turtles a year. You said your first year was not as successful. It was not. Uh, they were smaller uh, and we think a lot of predation uh, on those guys so they weren't able to find a lot. So take that year out about the nine extra it's about almost a thousand turtles. Yeah we're hoping that we got that. So I'm hoping they also got of course there's a field product we came off of that list but let's hope the majority of them survive. Yes that would be great. So Let's hope we can take a look at some of these other turtles. Sure. So I see the lettuce in these tubs, and do they actually eat that, or is it just kind of there? They sometimes might nibble on a little bit. Their main diet is uh, goldfish, and then uh, rectum sticks that you might get at home to feed your your turtle at home. And if you look over here in this taller tub, there are some goldfish in there. But my cameraman's a bit out of the way, so we're going to okay. show that later. All right. So this is a pretty Guy this well. is the bigger guy. Not really as big as this guy, but no. it's still pretty big. A pretty good size. You can see that algae uh, on him. But such great camouflage when they get out in the wild. Um, you know, I just think they're a perfect animal. All they have to do is set in the bottom and fish, you know, get it in their mouth and they just eat, you know. Uh, I think that's absolutely great. Um, the story is the biggest turtles used to be in Illinois because the males would come up and the males are bigger, and they just sit in the bottom of the ocean, or the, the river, I should say, uh, when they were here. But, uh, so you said you got a lot of calls with people with common snappers thinking about alligator snappers. Yes. So if I remember correctly, this is a younger. So how can people like, look at these turtles and tell if it's an alligator or a common? A smaller alligator snapping turtle has those definite bumps on it, ridges on the back, and that's the biggest way you can tell. I would just say, if you go on the internet and put a picture side by side, there's just absolutely no uh, doubt in your mind which it is. I look at the camera now, it's a bit of glare, so maybe one of these back here we can show. Yeah. Kind of escorting this way. But we are certainly always willing to you know, look at a turtle uh, that somebody has uh, found. Um, you know, Our first thing is don't pick up a turtle out of the wild and get there. Uh, but we will. Sometimes have people call and they say their child picked up a turtle, uh, and if we can figure out pinpoint where that turtle came from, um, our herpetologist will take it back to the exact same area if it hasn't been in captivity too long. Well, thank you so much for talking about the program here and uh, about all these second turtles. Well, thank you for uh, you know sharing the, the message of, of what we're trying to do with these guys. Absolutely. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Paul Shirley. As always, I'll see you next week.